Okay, so welcome. My, um, if we can go to the next slide, uh, Gareth. Welcome to everybody uh, tuning in to this webinar on the Macquarie MD. Uh, my name is Patrick McNeil. I'm the uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Medicine and Health at Macquarie University, uh, where I have two roles uh, running uh, Macquarie's health uh, service, MQ Health, as well as being the Executive Dean of the Academic Faculty of Medicine, Health, and Human Sciences. And thanks for joining us uh, for this information session about the Macquarie MD. Um, if we could just keep going through the slides, uh, next one. Um, I, you probably already read a little bit about the Macquarie MD. I'll just uh, give a brief overview before we open it up to uh, Q&A with our panel. Uh, it's a graduate entry program, a uh, four year um, uh, degree, which awards a MD or Doctor of Medicine. Uh, we typically call it the Macquarie MD. Uh, it's um, relatively new. It's Australia's, uh, we're Australia's newest uh, medical school. Um, it's got a number of innovative features, in particular, um, the clinical experiential learning that you learn to take in the Macquarie MD uh, is, occurs in a range of uh, locations, in, uh, including our own health service, MQ Health here on campus, but also uh, a partner hospitals in Hyderabad, India, uh, and in uh, North America. Um, it's unique for a number of features. It has a very small student cohort. Uh, we take typically in around about 60 students. Uh, most of them are Australian citizens, and so we have some international students. Uh, and we deliberately uh, want to have a small cohort so that we can uh, give you a very personal experience of studying uh, medicine. Uh, most of our students, and you'll hear from some of them on our panel, uh, most of our students know uh, our faculty, including myself by, by first name often. Uh, and, and we really do um, take an interest in every single student. Uh, our ac academic lecturers and tutors uh, know you. Um, you will know the other colleagues uh, that you're studying with, uh, including students uh, in years above you and below you. And, and we believe that's really important to give you an exceptional, uh, very student focused experience. Obviously every medical school thinks their uh, program or their degree course is unique. Um, ours is, is very innovative. I've been involved in designing uh, medical courses at other universities and I would say the Macquarie MD is unique for many reasons. It's got a very global focus in its experiences and we have done that deliberately to recognize uh, that um, uh, learning in different cultures prepares you uh, for the challenges that you will have as a practitioner regardless of where you where you practice. We have a strong academic interest in our faculty in health systems, uh, health services, uh, patient safety and quality. We have a big research institute and we've put that into our program because we believe that as a graduate uh, of a medical program, uh, you need to not only be a competent individual practitioner, but you need to be someone who works within a health system because that's the modern way that we practice. Uh, so there's a great focus on that, uh, as well as interprofessional uh, learning. So I'll just take you through uh, a few slides about the structure. If we go to the next slide uh, to show uh, year one of the program, uh, this is done on campus at our uh, Macquarie University at North Ride in Sydney. Uh, and these are the, uh, the, the units of study uh, in each uh, university session. Applied Medical Sciences, we do make some assumptions about your understanding uh, of fundamental sciences in, in your, uh, that you should have obtained in your undergraduate degree. So we do assume some knowledge, but the Applied Medical Sciences uh, covers uh, anatomy and physiology, uh, biochemistry, uh, pathology, microbiology, immunology. Um, uh, as it's applied to the practice of medicine. Uh, and that's about half of your learning in both sessions. And, and it's based around a systems-based approach where we go through systems of the body to, to cover that in an integrated fashion. You also do a unit of clinical practice, and this is where you learn the fundamental uh, communication skills of taking a history from a patient and physical examination skills and how you in interface and and have the technical skills uh, to do that systematically. 
uh, and um, we examine your um, skills in clinical practice uh, with a, a, an OSCE or practical exam at the end of each session. You also do uh, units in evidence-based uh, healthcare and in the professional healthcare, and they're, they're done in an interprofessional manner with our doctor of physiotherapy students. So they're co-taught uh, with our um, graduate entry physiotherapy program. In year two, um, uh, we introduce you to uh, real patients and real clinical experiences. If we press uh, the next slide, Gareth. Um, and that's also in a very integrated way where we cover um, different aspects of clinical learning and developing your clinical reasoning skills and improving your clinical history taking examination skills and understanding of, uh, of pathology and mechanisms of disease. Uh, and you rotate through three different uh, units of study in different orders. So the, the cohort of 60 students is divided into, into groups of about 20 and each of those 20 will study either primary care, wellbeing and cancer, or a musculoskeletal and neurosciences and aging, or, uh, or cardiovascular respiratory uh, surgery and metabolism in different orders. Um, but you all cover them all three. Uh, and then in the last part of uh, year two, uh, we have a, a unit where you all study together, uh, once again, as a single cohort, uh, focusing on critical care, patient safety and quality and research. And probably the Macquarie MD has the most intensive uh, experiences and learning in, uh, in patient safety and quality in health systems, which, which is focused to an extent in that unit of study. All, all your learning in years one and two is on the Macquarie campus. Your clinical learning occurs in Macquarie University Hospital and Clinics. Um, uh, and then if we move to year three and four, in year three, um, uh, you go through, um, uh, the typical uh, clinical disciplines of internal medicine, surgery, pediatrics, obstetrics, gynecology, and, and primary care in two different settings. So uh, half of you will uh, study those first in India at our partner hospital, Apollo Hospital in Hyderabad, uh, while the other half are studying uh, those same disciplines in uh, Australia and Sydney, um, either uh, or in, in a combination of our own hospital uh, and at uh, Royal North Shore Hospital and the Northern Sydney Local Health District, which is a large public hospital uh, close by. Uh, and you all do a research project uh, in parallel with your clinical learning, uh, which averages about a day per week. Uh, and those projects are, uh, are projects that you can do in combination. So they're often clinical or patient safety and quality or health systems or public health projects. So that's year three. Uh, year four is, uh, has been designed to be what we call advanced clinical placements. Uh, this is where you're a, an important junior member of a healthcare team. Uh, your, your experiences are mostly those which you choose from a range of selectives uh, and you can choose an elective. Um, the only prescribed units of study in year four are in emergency medicine and mental health, which will be done in uh, Northern Sydney local health district uh, facilities. Uh, uh, and then selective placements, which, will, which can be done uh, at, at virtually any of the uh, locations uh, where we have uh, clinical placements organized. So that is uh, overall a quick snapshot of the structure of the Macquarie MD. If we go to the next slide, I think I've got a a, uh, some information about admissions. Our admissions systems have changed for this new intake in uh, 2021. You do have to have a bachelor degree that you're going to complete this year or have completed. Um, as you know, and I'm sure you're aware that medical admission is very competitive. Um, we do require that your undergraduate degree, you have very good uh, academic excellence. Uh, with your grade point average. Uh, typically our students selected in our domestic cohort have GPAs are, are well above five. Um, the GAMSAT, uh, which uh, you may have done or are about to do, um, is taken into account and that's the minimum uh, uh, score that you, sh you would need to be able to apply through the, through, uh, the GEMSAS system. 
Uh, you are required to complete a personal statement, which is not particularly onerous, and we uh, assess that as either being satisfactory or not. Uh, that, that looks at your motivation for studying in the Macquarie MD and, uh, and your commitment to undertake um, uh, the range of clinical placements uh, that you need to be aware of, uh, which is unique for our, our course. Um, and you will undertake a, a model or mini interview, uh, which is in, in September of each year. To, to You apply in the national GEMSA system and then we use your GPA or WAM, 50% um, uh, uh, your GAMSAT score and satisfactory completion of the personal statement to rank all applicants and then from the highest ranked applicants based on those two metrics, we offer an interview. Um, if you're aware of the national system, you also put in a preference for which, for which medical school you're interested in attending, up to six uh, medical schools you can list, I believe. And depending on a matching of your preferences and our ranking, uh, you are then offered an interview at one of the schools that participates uh, so you only ever do one interview at each school, even if you want to go to, say, Deakin University, uh, you may get an interview at Macquarie. Uh, Deakin would use uh, our uh, MMI interview score uh, in, their, um, in their ranking. And if you had an interview, say, at uh, uh, another GEMSAS school, say the University of Notre Dame, we would use uh, the MMI scoring uh, in our selection. So it, it is a very cooperative uh, system for, for graduate entry programs. Um, and uh, it is uh, managed in a central way. Uh, but most of our students that we take in uh, were interviewed here at Macquarie. Importantly for 2020, uh, we are not using the GAMSAT score uh, to do our final ranking uh, of who we make offers to. We basically will use your GPA or WAM uh, together with uh, your MMI scoring. Uh, and, and that's, uh, we made that change because what we have found from looking at our first few cohorts and our review of the, of the evidence about selecting medical students is that uh, uh, they're the, the two most predictive of, uh, of performance in medical school. And that's really uh, one of the most important things about the selection process. So uh, I'm sure you'll have questions. Um, if we go to the next slide, um, what I'm gonna do is stop talking and introduce our panel who'll be able to uh, give you a bit more information and, and answer questions. I've got Professor uh, Kath Dean, who's, who's the Deputy Dean of the Faculty and Associate Dean Learning and Teaching. We've got uh, Dr. Uh, Janani Mahadeva, who's um, a, a practicing general practitioner in our MQ Health uh, GP clinic, but she's uh, an academic uh, GP. She runs our clinical practice uh, program in uh, year one, and she's also involved in um, uh, our students going to India in, in year three. And then we have uh, Gareth Mason, who's a current second year Macquarie uh, MD student. Uh, so I'll, I'll hand over to them and let them uh, take it from here. I can see there's already plenty of questions coming in. They'll be able to address those questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor McNeil. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this Macquarie MD webinar. Um, my name is Gareth, and as mentioned, I'm a second year medical student here at Macquarie. I'd just like to start off this panel by uh, telling you a bit about why I chose to come to Macquarie to complete the MD. So I actually started my journey at Macquarie a few years ago as a Bachelor of Clinical Science student. Um, I came out of high school and went into the Bachelor of Clinical Science because I felt that it had the most clinical experiences that you could get out of an undergraduate degree. Then by the time I got to the end of that degree, it became the time to think about which medical school I wanted to go to. And at that time, the Macquarie MD was already at the front of my mind. I got a, the amazing opportunity to meet a lot of the faculty staff during my time in the Bachelor of Clinical Science. And as Professor McNeil mentioned before, there's a really great community here at Macquarie. The lecturers are often on really good terms with the students. They have an amazing drive to help the students succeed. And I've really found that a lot of the uh, teachers, the researchers and the clinicians have gone out of their way to make sure that we are accommodated, to make sure that we have the best learning opportunity possible. So that um, was really at the forefront of my mind when I was choosing the medical school. 
I wanted to feel included and I wanted to have some great teaching staff. I also got to experience some of the fantastic facilities that we have here at Macquarie. Um, here in the Macquarie University Hospital, we've got some fantastic anatomy labs, which you get to use during the Macquarie MD. And that really also sold me on um, those facilities, really sold me on coming through to the Macquarie MD. I also really like that it's an innovative program. Being uh, Australia's newest MD, it's really kind of gone from the basics and built a MD that's designed for the future. Of course, it has that global focus, which I really am looking forward to in my third year. And we do have another student in third year, uh, Duan, who can tell you a bit more about that global focus. So I've been really enjoyed the innovative teaching style. There's been a lot of focus on digital health, a lot of focus on patient-centered care. And again, I'm really looking forward to being able to grow my cultural competency um, with the India Exchange Program. I think that's gonna be fantastic because Australia is such a multicultural country and being able to experience a different healthcare system, learn from a new culture and bring those skills back to Australia or to other countries around the world. It's really gonna help me be a standout clinician who's ready for anything. I'd also like to touch a bit on the application process as well, because I know it is a really daunting challenge when you're looking to get into medicine. The whole process can seem confusing. At Macquarie, the process was really straightforward for me. Um, like Professor Neil uh, mentioned, you apply through the GEMSAS scheme. Um, there's a little personal statement to fill out and then you're waiting for interviews. I was really uh, nervous for the interviews. I um, did a lot of uh, practice with my friends and family. I think I annoyed them a lot um, by constantly asking them to practice MMIs with me. But I think that's really a good tip that I'd like to share with you guys is practice, practice, practice. On the day when I came into Macquarie, I was very nervous, but I found that it was a really welcoming environment. All of the staff there on the day were very accommodating. They tried to calm us down, make sure we, we knew that everything was okay. And that made it uh, so much easier. There was also some second year students there on the day that helped answer questions about Macquarie and try to give us some of that student insight. So it was lovely having that, uh, almost feeling like part of the Macquarie family from the interview process. And that really helped calm me down and helped me to do my best. So, Yes, the application process can be a bit confusing, but by coming to this webinar, we've tried to explain it. Um, and I hope that we can share a bit more about what makes the Macquarie MD great. Now I'd like to open it up to the rest of our panel. So we have a few questions for them. As Professor McNeil has introduced them, I'd like to first send our first question to Dr. Janani Mahadeva. Um, are you there, Janani? Yes, great, thank you. Just checking the Zoom is working. So I'd like to ask you, what would be the main advice that you'd offer to a student considering the medical profession as a career? So look, it's, it's really fulfilling vacation and one where we're so privileged to be able to share in patient stories and in their lives. And I think every day when you come back from clinical practice and you, you sort of reflect on the day that you've had, it's an opportunity to think about how have I helped a person in a small, even, even a small way today? Um, and often it's, look, I think I've changed someone's life, even if it is in a small way. So I had a colleague share with me um, a few days ago that they said, look, if you've got something to do, something to learn and something to teach in medicine, that that will keep you really balanced. So I think starting from that point, medicine's really diverse. Um, so you can start your career in clinical medicine and then you branch, of course, into a subspecialty medicine to surgery, to critical care, radiology, pathology, whatever, you know, whatever, you, whatever takes your fancy at that point. And then you can also go into research and into to academic work, into teaching, and hopefully you'll, you'll have a career that's sort of quite rich um, and a mixture of all of these different areas. So I'd really consider that, encourage you all to consider that you look at your life in medicine and think about where do you want to be in the next sort of five to 10 years and think about how you can start to progress yourself along that pathway now. So whether it's getting yourself involved in research or, or starting to volunteer within the community or, or just upskilling uh, in things like basic life skills, it, sorry, basic support, um, life support skills. So getting started along that pathway is really important. Thank you for sharing those tips. Those are definitely really um, pertinent to considering a career in medicine. And I was lucky enough to take some of those to heart um, when I was in high school and through university as well. The next question is for Professor Catherine Dean, the Deputy Dean of the Faculty and also the uh, Learning and Teaching Head. Um, Kath, uh, Patrick and 
Bruce, uh, previously outlined some of the unique aspects of the Macquarie MD. Um, could you please expand a little bit on that? And would you use this to recommend the Macquarie MD over other courses? Uh, thanks, Gareth. Um, look, I think uh, Patrick highlighted some of the unique features or innovative features of our, our course. Um, but why I'd recommend you come and work with us is really the small cohort is really important. Uh, our whole faculty is committed to making all our students feel that they belong. Um, and that small cohort means that you get to actually um, know your staff, know your cohort. Uh, I think um, it's being designed by educational experts. Uh, it's underpinned by a really strong capability framework, like the capabilities that the modern medical professional needs. Um, and that educational expertise is littered through all our learning and teaching activities as well as our assessment framework. So students end up with a portfolio where all their assessment is actually in a portfolio, which shows them developing their capabilities over time. There's lots of assessment that is really low risk. It doesn't count you if you don't actually develop um, sufficient skill in a certain procedure you just come back and do it another another time. So it's really uh, a nurturing way of uh, getting feedback on your own development and being able to shape where you want to go. I think we've got fantastic staff and it's staff that are actually engaged in learning in an in a actual health system. Um, so you can, we've got the full ecosystem. Gareth already talked about doing our pre-med degree, but we also have a doctors in training programs, so we have interns and residents and registrars, as well as our, our, our specialists as well. And you'll get to be taught by those experts. So we have the full ecosystem there and you can kind of see and learn what kind of medical career you might want into the future. Um, and look, I think we're also um, really lucky to have teams of people who are expertise in health systems and public health as well, who will also be teaching into the program. But I think it's a small cohort. It's a commitment to really an exceptional student experience and making sure that we're focused on um, the development of the graduate capabilities that, that future doctors need. Thank you, Kath. And yes, uh, I really do enjoy the small cohort side of the Macquarie MD. It's fantastic to build those relationships with fellow students, but also with the clinicians. And there's some other great learning and teaching points that you've raised there. Um, I'd like to pass back to Janani now. Um, I'd like to ask you, what's been your most memorable moment as a doctor that perhaps really reaffirmed your career choice to move into medicine? I think much like any doctor, it's really hard to choose a single moment. Um, there are so many encounters where, you know, you meet a patient and they have a really profound impact on you. Um, and I think all of you will find that in your future careers as well. So just a couple of patients that come to mind. So as a GP with an interest in mental health, um, I had a very young male adolescent patient with really severe anxiety and an eating disorder that was undiagnosed for many years. Um, he'd become so fearful to just leave his house, he'd become quite a shell of the person that he used to be. And then with support and medication and therapy and over time, it was just wonderful to see him flourish. He just, he changed dramatically. He could just leave his house to do simple things that you, know, that you and I would take for granted. So for me, it really highlighted that the support we provide to patients, it can be healing and therapeutic in itself. Um, more recently, I've had a patient who has been struggling um, with risk, recurrent miscarriages and, and trying to difficulties trying to conceive. So I'd referred her to a fertility specialist and then about two days before the appointment, I got this really excited phone call saying, I'm already pregnant. Um, and so now she's had a few complications going through the pregnancy and a couple of hospital admissions and she's now due to give birth any time, so probably later this week. Um, and I just feel so fortunate to have been able to support her through this really, what has been a challenging but wonderful time in her life. And I said to her a few days ago, look, I'm really excited to see your newborn, to see your little bub. So I think it's these little joys that we find in medicine um, that fuel you to, to you know, continue along a career. Um, and it just reminds you about the reason about why we all came into medicine. Thank you for sharing those two stories, Janani. They really call back to what you said about the um, wonder of medicine to be able to touch patients' lives. Um, next question is for Kath. I'd like you to please tell us a bit more about the international clinical experience placement that um, is part of the Macquarie MD um, for the third year cohorts. Um, how did the students find their time in India so far? 
Okay, so thanks, Gareth. Um, uh, you know, part of our um, development of the capabilities, one of our capabilities is, it, is being an engaged global citizen that's a socially and culturally aware uh, practitioner as well as a public health and systems aware practitioner. And so we were looking for international partners that aligned with our values and our design of our course. So we, um, we had formed a partnership and, and it's developed over time with the Apollo Host Hospital Group in um, Hyderabad, India. Uh, and our third year students went there at the beginning of the year. Unfortunately, a global pandemic made them return to Australia, but they had gone through almost two of the, almost completed their second rotation there. Um, Dewan uh, will be on for the question and answer session. She was actually in India, so she could speak more to the experience. But I think it, um, the feedback from the students was, you know, it was a little bit of culture shock. It's interesting to live in a different um, country. Uh, they felt so welcome at Apollo. They, they really started to analyse the differences in health systems and they were, had a very good uh, experience. Um, you know, ch personally challenging at times, but overall a very good experience. Um, and we're looking forward to re-establishing that placement as soon as our, the COVID-19 pandemic um, resolves. Thank you very much. And like you said, uh, we do have a third year student, Duan Nguyen, who will be joining our next uh, Q&A panel so she can share a bit about her experience in India as well. Um, I'd just like to wrap up this section of the webinar by uh, reflecting on what I found to be the most enjoyable part of the MD so far. Um, moving into second year where we started doing uh, more clinically faced work has been really, really exciting for me. Um, my first rotation was in general practice and I really enjoyed that. It's just really um, been enjoyable to be able to go from that uh, classroom learning and some of that simulated teaching in year one and then be able to apply that to real patients and be involved in that journey. Um, together with all the other clinicians at MQ Health and in the Macquarie area, it's been really fantastic to get a taste of many different clinical specialties and really start to come into contact with patients. So I'm really excited for all that the MD has to offer and I'm really hoping that it's going to help me narrow down where I want to go in the future. Now it's time for you, uh, everybody else to participate in the Q&A. So if you have a look on your Zoom panels, you can see at the bottom of your screen, there is a Q&A button. Um, some of you have already been using that feature so far and you've sent out a few Q&As to, Q to us. What we'll do now is we'll introduce a few other panelists and we'll start to answer your questions so we can um, help you with your inquiries. I'd just like to introduce our other panelists. So um, on the panel, we have myself, we have Professor Catherine Dean, as previously mentioned. We have Haley Harris, who is the Director of Educational Services. Um, Dr. Janani Mahadeva will be joining us again. We have Karen Scully, our a Faculty Admissions Officer. And we also have Duan Yuan, as I mentioned, a third year student. So now we'll just pull up some of the questions and we'll get underway. So the first question, I'll pass over to Kath. Is early entry available for this course? Uh, well, we have, um, for international students, we have a, a bundled offer with Beeklin Sci MD, but for domestic students, um, you need to go through the process of GEMSAS MMI interviews, that process. Sure. Um, the next question, I think we've touched on it a bit earlier in our presentation. Um, could you please advise on what would be a competitive GAMSAT score um, at Macquarie? I think we did mention that the minimum would be 50 earlier on in the presentation. Uh, I think it might be better to ask Karen, because as our admissions officer, because um, I don't know the GAMSAT scores. Sure. Karen, would you have anything to say to that? Thanks, Thanks Gareth. Yes. Um, so the average uh, GAMSAT score for 2020 intake was 65. So that's the sort of level that we're looking at. Um, we will still be using GAMSAT uh, for the 2021 intake, but that is for the initial selection for interview. It is for the place offers that we won't be including GAMSAT in the selection criteria. Sure, thank you, Karen. Would you be able to speak a bit about the clinical science pathway into the Macquarie MD? 
Uh, we just had a question asking if their chances would be increased into getting into the Macquarie MD if they were to come through clinical science. Uh, obviously, clinical science is an excellent uh, course to go into the MD, uh, but we do accept all degrees. Um, though we have uh, students coming in with arts degrees as well. It doesn't have to be a science degree. Um, the, there is the um, advantage of having some uh, human anatomy and human physiology uh, in the program that uh, is um, for uh, assumed knowledge, which is an, an advantage. Um, but it's not essential because that will be covered. Um, it may require some extra study in the first year of the medicine program, but uh, it will be covered. So um, we accept all degrees. Thank you very much. Um, the next question can be open to a number of people. It can be open to Karen, Cap, or Patrick if uh, he's still available. Um, we've had a question asking, will the student intake increase over the next few years? Uh, look, I can take that one if you like. Um, Thank you. We have no intention of increasing the student intake. As, a, as I said in the introduction, um, we, we are very keen to maintain that Macquarie MD is a, a, a small, a relatively small cohort so that uh, that's one of the special things that our students love about it and our and our teachers also love about it so we have no plans to increase the, the intake. Thank you very much and we've also had a question come in about clinical placement uh, starting in the first year and whether or not that um, is the case. Um, Kath could you please just uh, reiterate um, how the program moves from the first year to the second year in, with regards to clinical experiences? So um, there, is, there is clinical placements uh, at a community level embedded into the interprofessional units in first year. So um, the medical students and the physiotherapy students together work with um, volunteers from the community and, and go and get to practice some of the early skills that they're learning in like taking a history, understanding the health determinants of an individual by working um, in our health and wellbeing collaboration. Um, and then once we move into, um, and while they develop um, clinical skills in clinical practice in the simulated setting, uh, in second year then they go into early uh, integrated clinical experiences in MQ Health. Um, and then they progress into the joining the experiment, experiential team delivery in, um, in core clinical placements in third year and more advanced placements in fourth year. Thank you very much. Um, the next question we've had come through is in relation to the GAMSAT and the, how long the GAMSAT is rel, uh, uh, able to be used for applications to the MD. So we've had a question about, oh, sorry, it's just moved off my screen. Um, we've had a question about the GAMSAT. Um, if the student is looking to apply in 2021 and 2022, um, which GAMSAT year would they be able to sit for? Um, and which year would they need to sit the GAMSAT in? Could I pass that to Karen, please? Yeah, so um, the GAMSAT is valid for two years. So from date of sitting, then uh, you have two years to then apply to uh, the medicine program of your choice. Um, the... GAMSA is uh, still relevant for uh, application, even though we are not using it in our actual offer criteria. Uh, so, but we do still require GAMSA for entry. Sure. And another question for Karen, a uh, very popular panelist tonight. Um, <laughs> we're wondering, is there um, a benefit to doing an honours year before applying to the Macquarie MD? Is it something that we recommend? Do students need to do it? They must do the GAMSAT, yes. So, sorry, did I misunderstand you there? So, sorry, it was the, an honours year. Our students oh, sorry, an honours year. year. Um, I, an honours year, um, if you, I mean, that's very much an optional thing uh, as an honours year. Um, lots of students do it if perhaps their undergraduate degree is maybe not as strong as they would like and they do the honours year to increase their GPA. 
Um, but it, it's not an essential um, criteria for entry to the Doctor of Medicine. Thank you very much. I'd like to pass the next question to Duan, our third year medical student. We've had a question come in about the clinical placement in India and what your experience was like there. Yeah. Um, uh, hi, guys. My name is Duan. I'm a third year medical student. And earlier this year, I was lucky enough to actually go to India and do two rotations. Um, over there, I did obstetrics and gynecology, as well as my pediatrics rotation. Um, and I think the question of whether or not I enjoyed it is if you asked any of us of the 22 that went, you'd all get the same answer. And it was that it was such an intensely enjoyable, um, humbling and insightful experience over there. Um, and you can get any of us started talking about it and we wouldn't stop. But um, you know, how what I personally found that I loved about it was that it was both academically and culturally really valuable for me. Um, in terms of academics, I was over there and I was interacting directly um, with world-class physicians. Um, these are doctors and surgeons who have patients come all over the world to see them and I had access to all of that medical knowledge from them. Um, with that, um, I was able to sit in on some really cool surgeries, deliver some babies, which was such a fun and um, kind of heartwarming experience. Um, and in terms of uh, culturally how I found it so valuable was um, having come back here and having time to reflect on it and also doing some placements here in Australia, in Sydney, I've actually realised how much more confident I am navigating some of the, I guess, cultural barriers and difficulties that you will face when you interact with patients um, in Australia uh, who are not from, you know, English speaking backgrounds. Um, and I feel like I feel like all of us who have gone to India feel very much on track to becoming that culturally competent and um, globally engaged um, intern for when we actually get out there. And we're excited to apply some of the skills we've learned in India to the Australian healthcare system. Thank you, Duane. Sounds like it's been a fantastic time over there. Uh, it's unfortunate that it got cut short. Um, I'd like to ask you another question, um, bringing you back to Australia. How have you found the teaching um, at Macquarie and how have you found the uh, Macquarie Hospital being right next door to class? How has that affected your study and your opportunity to experience some clinical scenarios? Yeah, it's actually one of the best parts about doing um, my studies at Macquarie is that it is a stone's throw away from some of the best facilities, teaching tools, actually. Um, and so, you know, for example, I always think about when I learnt about I guess, the heart, the heart anatomy um, in my lectures. And I thought, well, this is kind of confusing. I don't quite understand it. But then I thought to myself, hang on, wait. Well, you know, the heart surgeries are actually happening next door in the building next door. And so I thought, why not use some of that to my advantage? And so I signed up to go to the cath labs and also to some of the open heart surgeries the next day. Um, and this was in my second year, really early on in the medical um, journey. And that's kind of seeing it in action, I think, is one of the most um, uh, useful tools that I could have to actually learn the anatomy. Because I think, you know, some of us struggle with memorizing textbooks. For those learners who love hands-on and practical application of their knowledge, I'm learning it 10 minutes before and then going into surgery. I think that's one of the best parts about having it so close to us. Yeah, I, as a second year student, I've just uh, walked into that uh, just been able to start getting underway with those clinical um, experiences and it's honestly been fantastic so I can't wait to see it increase. The next question I'd like to ask um, is directed to Janani. We've had a student ask um, what is the process after graduating from an MD, MD program and what are the next steps that students take um, in order to become a registered doctor? So after you complete your medical degree then we'll sign on to complete an internship and residency so that's usually a two-year contract in New South Wales specifically. Uh, and then you decide upon the training pathway that you'd like to pursue. And then you can do further sort of RMO, so resident medical officer years, and then commence on a training pathway. Um, some training pathways start a little bit earlier. So general practice and psychiatry, you can enter from your second year um, after finishing medical school. Thank you very much. We've had some more questions for Karen in terms of admissions. 
Um, we've had a student ask, what type of information do you normally need to include in your personal statement? Um, the personal statement that we have is, uh, it's not so much a traditional personal statement. Um, it's, it's actually um, three questions uh, and geared towards uh, your impressions and what you expect to learn in international placement. Um, and it, it's very much a, a personal a statement, it's a personal thing. And um, it, 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 these are short questions. It's, it's not a, like a half page or anything like that. It, it's your impressions of what you think you're going to learn uh, when you're on uh, international clinical placements. Thank you. Um, another admissions question that's been coming through from a number of current Macquarie students, they've just been asking about um, potential uh, uh, benefits by, for being a current Macquarie student. Um, does the MD recognize current Macquarie students in terms of scholarships or um, benefits to applying to the program? There are benefits to being a Bachelor of Clinical Science student. They, uh, there are some scholarships related to that program. Uh, other than that, uh, the scholarships are open to everyone. Um, it, they're not specific to um, any other degrees within the, the Macquarie community. Thank you. And that also leads on to another question. Could you please just touch quickly on some of the scholarships that are available to support students? Uh, th there are two equity merit scholarships. There are five Bachelor of Clinical Science scholarships. There is also a Medical Leader of the Future scholarship. And there are two scholarships for Indigenous students uh, coming into the program. So yeah, that's, that's the selection of scholarships that we have currently. Thank you. Um, I think Duan and myself might take the next question. So we've had a question related to how many days a week do uh, students study typically in the Macquarie MD and what does that look like? So as a first year MD student, I was on campus about, uh, about three days, three to four days a week um, with an independent study day where I was at home mostly doing study. Um, that was mainly a combination of lectures and then some clinical tutorials, which involved uh, history taking skills, physical examination skills. And on the other day that I was off campus, I had the opportunity to go and visit some of our community health volunteers um, in the Hawk program that has been mentioned. So that was a way that I could really start to engage with patients. Moving into second year, um, the timetable has been a bit more uh, sporadic. It changes a bit, but that's the nature of uh, clinical placements. Um, I've been on campus about, again, three to four days a week, um, but this time it's been much more focused on uh, clinical experiences, either going into the Macquarie University Hospital and its associated clinics, or some GP practices around the Macquarie area. Uh, our lectures have continued, but they are much more focused on specific clinical presentations, specific diseases, and we're beginning to focus more on the treatment. So it's really been gradually stepping up since first year, moving into more complex cases in second year. And I'll ask Duan a bit more about third year. So Duan, could you touch a bit on your experience, the number of days you're at class on, uh, at um, Macquarie and how's it been in third year? Yeah, um, so at the beginning of the year when I was at Apollo Hospital in India, I was at the hospital four to five days a week, um, Monday through Friday usually. Um, and that was, you know, doing clinical placements. So I'll either be floating around the wards, um, following some junior doctors to consultants, as well as being in surgery or waiting the delivery suite. Um, so it, these types of clinical placements are really what you make of it and, and how much you want to put, uh, throw yourself into it. And I find that that's how it's the most exciting is that you do throw yourself into it. Um, and we also have um, a day dedicated to doing our research project. So in um, third year and fourth year, you'll be um, assigned a research project and you'll be, you know, under the guidance of some um, supervisors and what that helps you do is develop the skills so that later you're an academic when you graduate. Um, and I find that I spend 
quite a bit of time working on reading the literature and uh, formulating my ideas and trying to write um, some, I guess, uh, my own opinions in a scientific way. Um, and then when I've come back to Australia, um, I've started clinical placements um, this week and my schedule currently looks like it will either be five to six days a week um, and that's because they've incorporated some um, after hours shift because sometimes more interesting things happen after hours and I'm very excited to see that. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. But again, one of those days is dedicated to a research project. And I find that most of my lectures are happening in the evening when everyone's finished with their clinical placements um, and then it's study after that. Thank you, John. Um, I have another question for Karen related to scholarships. We've just been asked, how do students go about applying for those scholarships? Uh, thank you. Um, so for the Bachelor of Clinical Science scholarships, that is uh, merit-based and those are awarded to the highest ranked Bachelor of Clinical Science students who are successful in the Doctor of Medicine programme. Um, for the medical leader of the future, that is the top ranked student that enters the program each year. Um, for the equity merit scholarships, they, they are equity based, so um, it would have to be some kind of equity reason, uh, hardship or um, rural um, case or um, some sort of medical disability or something along those lines. Um, and they have to provide evidence of that. It's, it's not just a, an automatic assumption. And, and then again, it's also uh, because it's a merit, merit equity scholarship, it's based uh, on merit as well. So therefore, again, the, the highest ranked students are successful. Uh, for the Indigenous students, uh, again, that would, is uh, awarded to the uh, when two of the Indigenous students that have the the highest ranking. So, um, yeah, Thank that's you. how the scholarships are awarded. Thank you for elaborating on that. We do have another question about applicants and the application process. We mm -hmm. have a student asking how many applicants on average does Macquarie get a year? And of those of us who are successful, what would the average GPA be? Um, so the number of applications varies from uh, 690 to well over so nearly 800, uh, depending on which year it is. Um, the to be successful, uh, again, we're looking at average GPAs. Um, in the last two years, the average GPA of the students gaining an offer to study uh, has been 6.5. Um, that is an average, so it's not, um, obviously, that there are some students who have below that and some above that, so um, yeah. It's, uh, it's that sort of range. Thank you. I'll just take a little break from our Q&A panel, um, just because I'm conscious of time. I'd like to direct you to the polling function on this uh, Zoom webinar. So I'll launch the polling now. We just have two questions for all of our attendees. Um, and you should see that come up on your um, Zoom platform now. We just like you to um, ask, answer those questions um, in the remaining minutes of the webinar. Um, and we'll move back to our Q&A now. Um, this question can go to Kath or anyone else who um, feels they have something to say on it. We've just had a student ask about the COVID-19 situation. Obviously, it's been very um, uh, difficult for students and for faculty managing this situation. And they are just wondering what's Macquarie been able to do to support students during this time? Um, thanks, Garrett. Yeah, COVID-19 um, has um, disrupted our our plans. Um, so we we did bring our students back from India, and and then we've secured clinical placements in Australia for them. Uh, we have moved our first year teaching online, um, but a lot of it is uh, supplemented with synchronous um, Zoom tutorials. So the students are 
studying online, but we're going to be able to, um, pending no changes in COVID, uh, be able to offer on-campus um, development of clinical skills sessions um, in second semester. Um, so that's very exciting to bring our students back onto campus. Clinical placements have continued. Uh, we have prioritised our third years for placements. And so a lot of the second year clinical experiences have also been run on Zoom. I think we've had a wonderful learning community where our stage uh, one leaders and unit conveners have really rallied the troops and we've got a wonderful community of patients that are prepared to work online with our students. So students have been doing many um, history taking sessions and bedside shoots on Zoom. Um, but they will um, start in, in June back on campus, um, which will be fantastic. Um, yeah, so we have really been able to prioritise clinical placement and clinical skill development. Uh, we're going to be opening up our anatomy labs again for um, the first years in, in second semester. So COVID's been challenging. Um, I think it's interesting as future health professionals, um, we need to train our future health work to, to deal with a health pandemic. Um, so it's been interesting from a public health perspective for our students to learn about. Um, some of our students have been volunteering in some of the COVID clinics as well. So there have still been opportunities, but it has meant that we've tried to restrict the time people have been on campus and, um, and some of our um, materials for first years have um, moved online. But we're moving forward and hoping to re-establish our international placements when the borders all open. Yes, hopefully um, that will be very soon. Um, but <laughs> as a student, I've um, been very, very impressed and very thankful to the faculty for the manner in which they handled the situation. Obviously, it was unprecedented um, and came out of the blue for everyone, but I felt really supported. We've had a fantastic um, round of communication from the faculty. They've been with us every step of the way, and they've been really looking after our mental health as well. They're always checking in with us to see how we're going on at home. So I've been really thankful for what they've been able to do in the short space of time that has been this pandemic. Um, next question I'd like to open up to Duan. We've had a student ask, what's it like to move from an undergraduate degree into a postgraduate degree? What are some of the differences between the two? Yeah, that's a, I guess that's a really good question. Um, uh, for me, I did a lot of self growth through undergraduate my undergraduate degree and when I got to a postgraduate degree I realized um, I needed a lot more I guess um, I needed to know why I was doing what I was doing and so when I started studying medicine um, I realized I was tapping into you know my passions and that was what was motivating me it wasn't about marks anymore it was about why I wanted to be a better medical student and in the end a better doctor um, in terms of logistics as to how it's different um, I find that it's really it's it's about how, how much you want to put in and that's how much you're going to get out of a postgraduate degree. Um, the content is going to be a little bit harder because now you're specializing in something that, you know, you want to, you want to bring out into the world and use some of these skills to actually help people. So that's, that's a given. But I think when you pair that with your passion about why you want to do it, postgraduate degrees are then really um, you finding out what your career is. Um, I guess it's a really big question and, um, you know, I could talk about it forever, but my favourite part about the postgraduate, uh, doing a postgraduate degree is just that I get to do what I love and I think that's how you know you're in the right spot. Yes, I, I totally agree with what you've said there and I've really felt the um, sense of community in the medical degree. Um, moving from undergrad where everyone's very focused on marks, I really identify with what you've said about everybody trying to be the best doctor they can be. Um, and as we've mentioned before with the assessment design of the MD, um, it's really trying to help students be the best clinicians they can be, the best medical researchers they can be, the best medical sciences they can be. It, there's not a lot of pressure in terms of needing to do well. We're just trying to help you along the way. So I found that to be um, really beneficial in moving from an undergraduate to a postgraduate degree. The next question I have, I will uh, open to uh, Professor Patrick McNeil, but also open to anybody else. We've had a student ask, um, will Macquarie ever look into offering CSP or bonded medical places um, uh, in the future? Uh, ever is, is a difficult word. There's no plans for that 
to occur. Um, you're probably aware that Commonwealth supported places um, are, are regulated by the by the federal government. Um, so Macquarie doesn't doesn't intend to request Commonwealth supported places in medicine. Sure. Thank you for answering that one. And what I'd like to do now is just take you over a. Uh, big... oh, sorry, Gareth. I, That's I, okay. I should have added that. We did talk about scholarships uh, before, and um, the scholarships that Macquarie offers are very generous. So uh, they they cover a substantial amount of the full fees, so that eff effectively uh, the amount you're paying is not much different to a CSP um, uh, difference. Uh, and there's uh, for an intake of um, of sixty students, I think we offer up to. Uh, uh, 10 scholarships. So it, it's a significant proportion and, and we're certainly committed rather than uh, seeking Commonwealth supported places. Our, our strategic plan is to increase the number of those scholarships uh, as we go. Uh, thank you for that answer to that question. Um, what I'd like to do now is just move over to a slide uh, summarizing our um, application dates because um, a lot of these questions um, will come up. Um, just while that slides on the screen, Karen, we've just had a question about um, admissions. Um, if a student's undertaking a PhD, um, is that uh, beneficial? Um, how does that work with applications to Macquarie? Thanks, Gareth. Um, yeah, P PhD students, we ask that the PhD is complete before they uh, apply to study medicine. Um, the PhD definitely has a beneficial effect on your uh, GPA calculation. Um, so we award a straight seven for the, uh, for the PhD. Um, that is uh, in the GPA calculation, that is for the final year calculation. Uh, the uh, postgraduate qualifications are calculated together uh, and awarded for the, the final year of the calculation. And then uh, it, it goes back to your undergraduate degree uh, for the, the other two years of the GPA calculation. Um, so yes, it, it is beneficial, definitely. Thank you very much. Gareth, yeah, um, can I just add one thing? Sure. Um, just if you've got a PhD, uh, uh, you can get um, recognition of prior learning for the research project, um, or you could still elect to do the research project as well. But um, you know, it can reduce your load in, in stage two of the, the degree. Uh, that would definitely be helpful. Thank you for providing that insight. Um, that will uh, conclude our Q&A panel. Uh, so I'm just conscious of time, we need to wrap things up. So thank you for all of those of you who've submitted questions to our panel. Um, thank you for taking the time to join this webinar. If we haven't been able to answer your question, rest assured that we will be in contact with you um, following this webinar to provide an answer. So don't feel that you've missed out. We will be getting in contact with you. I'd also just like to reiterate some of the application timeframes, just so that everybody has the right dates. So as you can see on the screen, uh, GEMS House applications for this year are opening on Thursday, the 7th of May, and they will be closing at 5 p.m. on Thursday, the 11th of June. Um, this year, GEMS House testing will be taking place um, over a number of dates um, online from Thursday, 28th of May to Tuesday, the 9th of June. Uh, Macquarie's MMI interviews will be taking place on the 26th of September this year. And everyone who's um, received a offer for an invitation to interview must be available on this date. Um, if you do have any other questions, um, if you finish this webinar and think you need to um, ask anything, please feel free to contact us um, on the uh, email there, medicine at mq.edu.au. Um, we'd love to answer your questions and we will be more than ready to support you on your journey to application and hopefully joining us at the Macquarie MD. So I'd like to say thank you to all of our panelists for taking time out of the day to join us. Thank you for everyone to, uh, for joining us today at the Macquarie MD webinar. Um, even if it is a bit of an uncertain time where we're joining online, thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us. We hope we've been able to answer your questions. 
and we um, hope to see you on campus soon.